Pirates have always captured our imaginations for their intriguing seafaring adventures and flamboyant characteristics. But how did pirates come to be? And how much of what we think we know about them is actually true? Many of history's most famous pirates began as privateers. But when wars ended, and with few other skills, many sailors succumbed to the lure of treasures, pleasures, and being their own boss. And so they began illegally raiding rich merchant vessels, becoming pirates. Historians and fiction writers alike portray pirates as anarchists who spoke in colorful language, had bad manners, and dressed in attire challenged only by that of an 80s pop band. But with over several centuries of global activity, the type of pirates we romanticize were from only a very short time period, roughly 1700 to 1725. <laughs> If you've ever mimicked pirate speak by gutturally belting out "arr" or "avast," you'd be historically incorrect and probably be asked to leave the job interview. Pirates never really spoke like that. In turn, nobody knows exactly how pirates spoke because they rarely wrote down their vernacular speech. In the English West Country, "arr" was an affirmation. So you go. <laughs> oh, uh. Not unlike the Canadian A. Eh? How's it going, A? Eh? And maritime expressions were a part of everyday speech in that era. But while many pirates and mariners might have come from the West Country, so you might have heard an oh, uh. here or there, most were not. Right. What did he say? Another famous pirate myth are the ragged bits of fabric with hand drawn scribbles and clues leading to buried treasure. In reality, treasure maps were made up for popular novels and films. There's little historical record of any pirate ever drawing a map to their buried doubloons. We do not follow maps to buried treasure, and X never, ever marks this spot. One of the exceptions to this might be the story that Captain William Kidd had buried some loot with the hope that one day, if he was ever arrested for piracy, he could share the location of the hidden treasure with his captors and buy his freedom. In an era that presumably coined the phrase, careful or you'll poke an eye out with that thing, the eye patch was not necessarily the resulting fashion accessory of a violent injury. Working on a ship, a pirate must constantly switch between decks, above where navigation and sailing takes place, and below to fetch supplies and man weapons during a battle where there were no windows and, at best, a few flickering candles. Well, let me see. By covering one eye with a patch, that eye is left in a dark adaptive state. This means that when the pirate is on deck working in the blazing sun, the eye is guarded against it. When they step into the darkness below deck, the patch can be switched to the other eye, and instantly the pirate will be able to find their way around. Running from government patrol ships, pirates often needed to avoid pursuit and Florida's Gulf Coast became a common place for this. Its many bays, rivers, inlets, and marshes provide perfect hideouts. Here, legendary pirate Jose Gaspar left his mark in Florida history, or at least folklore. Fueled by local legend, fictional biographies, and the tall tales of a local fishing guide named Panther John Gomez, Gaspar the Outlaw's Pirate Kingdom has become a destination for celebrating the last of the buccaneers and other long-past raiders of the high seas. The first Gasparilla pirate invasion was on May 4, 1904. To this day, each January, the only fully rigged pirate ship in the world, the Jose Gasparilla, emerges at the south end of Hillsborough Bay with a vibrant flotilla of private boats, jump-starting festivities for over one million attendees. But as you see, it's a beautiful day, the beaches are open, 
and the people are having a wonderful time. Travelers from all around the globe land in Tampa Bay to celebrate all the pillaging, plundering, and yo-ho-hos, capitalizing on the legacy of those once seafaring opportunists. Though thankfully today, it's a little less stabby. That's just a few of the common pirate myths. Which did you find most interesting, and would you like to know more? Let us know in the comments section.